Hey everybody and welcome back to another video. In today's video we are talking about the latest episode of The Bad Batch. Um, I think it's number nine is the episode because last last week we were at the halfway point so it's got to be number nine. Uh, Sarah is here with us and she is going to go ahead and give you our mini episode overview. So go ahead Sarah. So I believe this was called The Lost Bounty I think. Yep. Um, we kind of pick up from last week where uh, Omega's been captured, but we don't know. We know that it's Bane, but um, the Bad Batch group doesn't know that it's him, so they're trying to figure out who's got her. Uh, she wakes up captured in his ship, and the little robot, Bane's little robot friend, um, is kind of missing a leg, and so he's trying to um, fix his leg, and Omega winds up convincing him to have her help him, um, just kind of as a, where else am I going to go? We're stuck in this ship. But what really happens is she winds up finding, uh, she fixes his leg and then knocks him out and finds her comm link so that she can contact the Bad Batch. Um, so when they, when they, when the ship lands at whatever planet they're landing at, which I'm not 100% sure where this is, um, that's when she is able to escape the ship and contacts the Bad Batch, but the signal's really weak, so they kind of struggle trying to figure out different ways of how to locate her. Um, at the same time, we find out that um, the person who, or the people who uh, hired Bane to get her are the Kaminoans, right? So it's the, in particular, the Prime Minister of the Kaminoans. There's like three main ones. Um, and so the Prime Minister... Uh, tells the um, the one lady who kind of seems more friendly, if you will, and less business and um, more social, uh, that she has too much of a conflict of interest to go and get Omega, so he sends somebody else to go get her. It's important because later, um, while Bane's trying to find Omega on this ship, Fennec shows up. Um, we saw her back a few episodes ago. And so there's a, a lot of battling between the two of them. Um, we kind of later find out that uh, I'm going to kind of jump around a little bit here because there's a lot of pieces that are all moving together at the same time. But we later find out that the reason why Fennec's there is because the Kaminoan, who is really social, uh, who had a conflict of interest, um, had hired Fennec to get Omega. And so kind of some of the real brief politics behind that is the prime minister wants her for her DNA and then just wants her killed right after that. And so we're thinking that the social one, again, I don't know her name, but she's one of the communuans, um, wants her for something else, either wants her for the DNA and then wants to keep her alive or maybe doesn't want her DNA. We don't know. Um, but Omega is able to kind of escape while Bane and Fennec are doing some of their fighting. Uh, Omega gets on one of these little um, flight pods, I think is what they're called, or something like that. Um, and she's able to launch herself away from this little planet uh, that she's on. I think she's still on the planet, but she launches herself away from that landing area. And right when she's about to crash land is when um, our Bad Batch group... Uh, I don't kind of uses the a force beam or something to kind of pull her little pod up to their ship and is able to rescue her um, and talk to her about, you know, why she's so valuable and why everybody's after her. Um, and I think the only thing that we really kind of wrap up with is um, Fennec talking to that social uh, Kaminoan. This is when we find out that that's who hired her um, and that uh, the the communion is just happy that she's not in the hands of Bane or um, the Prime Minister. So she wants Fennec to just leave her with the Bad Batch. She's fine. You don't need to capture her or anything um, as long as she's not with the Prime Minister. So I think that pretty much wraps up the episode um, in a nutshell. <laughs> yeah, I, I do want to add a couple of things to it. Um, Go for it. Uh, so one thing that's kind of an Easter egg um, the character Lamu Su, which is the communion that was sent to go to this rendezvous point planet to meet Bane, that ends up being dead from what we assume. Uh, that's actually the communion that is showing 
Obi-Wan Kenobi around the facility in episode two. Um, or no, not Lama Su. Lama Su is the prime minister. Tan Wee, that's her name. Tan Wee, she's the one that went to the rendezvous point. The prime minister is uh, Lama Su. Uh, so there's that little Easter egg uh, connection to the films. Uh, also, the planet that they went to is called Leader, from what I gathered from what they said. It sounded more like Leader than like leading people, Leader. Um, and what's interesting is uh, it, it looked like an uh, off-site cloning facility because uh, Omega eventually um, stumbles across this little area where she's able to uh, put a satellite dish up that tells the Bad Batch, hey, this is where I'm at, so that they can come find her because they had no way of finding her. But when she's in that room, she notices these tanks that have these bodies in them, and they look like they've been there forever, like they're not in use anymore. Um, we looked very closely to see uh, what might have fallen out of it, because one of them falls over and breaks, and we kind of gather that it's just another Camino person. So the, it might have been a facility where they were testing out cloning their own people at one point. Uh, so it's not... It wasn't blatantly saying, oh, hey, this was an off-site cloning facility, but that's kind of what we gathered from it. Our favorite parts of the episode. Uh, my favorite part was the fight between Cad Bane and Fennec. I thought um, they did a really good job with showing both of their strengths. Um, and they also showed the unique parts of them. So... Like when Cad Bane and Fennec were fighting, I was wondering to myself, is he ever going to use his boots, the um, like rocket boots, so to speak, kind of like Star-Lord. Um, and eventually he does. Uh, she like kicks him off the platform and he ends up using his boots. Uh, he loses his hat as one, at one point. Um, yeah, I enjoyed the fight scene. I thought it was a really great choreography for that for an animated show. And, uh, yeah, I guess that's my favorite part. Sarah, what's your favorite part? I guess just one thing that I kind of missed from our recap is at the very beginning, we know that Crosshair is still after the Bad Batch, and so they jump into light speed to get away from Crosshair. But just to kind of as a wrapping up from the last episode, that little piece is kind of important as far as how they got rid of Crosshair, how they um, lost him. Um, in terms of favorite parts, I did really like that fight scene too. I liked that. It, I always like when we find something different to show us. Um, and having uh, this fight scene be more um, elaborate than the one with Hunter, because the one with Hunter was over so fast. So I really liked that this one kind of um, was more drawn out and uh, not just who can shoot first. Um, so I think my favorite part is going to be a combination of that. <laughs> But then also, um, I still really like the little robot guy. I think he's kind of annoying, but also kind of cute. Um, I like that Omega's able to trick him into, well, let me fix your leg. I'll just do it. And um, I like that she didn't just straight up, uh, um, I don't want to say kill, because he's not killed, but Knock stun him, him immediately. She actually fi fixes his leg. Um, and so he's able to participate in later parts of the episode and I think he's kind of sassy, too, which is funny, so. Yeah, I almost feel like he's what Dio should have been in episode nine. I didn't really care for Dio myself, but this guy's pretty cool. This guy has a lot more personality, I think. Yeah. Well, I think that about wraps it up for this episode. Uh, again, uh, it was episode nine. I think you said it was called Bounty Lost. I think so. And so... We are heading towards episode 10 next week. Um, I don't really know where it's going to be going uh, because now Omega's back with the Bad Batch. There's, well, there's bounty hunters on their tail, I, so, I guess. Um, so we'll We're going to have to find a safe place. I yeah. wouldn't be surprised if they um, wind up going back with Captain Rex or whoever Captain Rex's friend is that we saw earlier in the season. Yeah. We'll have to wait and see. I know, I don't think you watched it, but I did. Um, there was a season, mid-season sneak peek that was released, uh, I want to say, fr 
Friday, Thursday or Friday. And in that mid-season sneak peek, they had new scenes that are coming from uh, future episodes. And uh, uh, we're heading towards some fairly epic stuff. So I'm excited to see when that happens. Yeah, I did not know that even came out. So I'll have to watch that. <laughs> yeah. I know you don't like things uh, spoiled for you as much as I do. So <laughs> I wanted to see because uh, the, the green tank with the clone, I knew that was coming. I knew it was coming, but I didn't know what was going to be in the tank or because what they showed was the tank falling on Fennec and Omega was in the shot. And I had wondered if she was force sensitive or something, but um, we clearly saw in this episode that she pushed a button and it made the tank fall over. So lots of speculation from that sneak peek, but uh, that's all it is, is speculation. If you haven't already, please turn on notifications. That way you are notified when the next uh, Bad Batch discussion drops. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel, drop a like if you like this video, and drop a comment letting us know your favorite parts from this episode, and if you have any speculations from that sneak peek that was dropped. And then as always, everybody, thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.